that's a very old picture it's Jonah emerging from the whale it's a variant of a, a myth the myth is the dragon myth I suppose the dragon myth is that there's a dragon that lives under the ground that's eternal and now and then it rises out of the ground to threaten the state and someone within the state determines to go confront the dragon voluntarily and does so and then brings back something of great value sometimes if the the, the, the hero is generally male sometimes the thing of great value is a female that the dragon has kidnapped that's a St. George story and sometimes it's gold and other treasure like in the story of the Hobbit and a story that you all know very well it's a classic hero story and the hero story is another fundamental element of the clinical theories I would say it's predicated on the idea that you learn through voluntary contact with that that frightens or disgusts you and that's a hallmark of psychoanalytic theory Jung, Carl Jung, who we'll discuss in detail, said his primary dictum was Insterquilinus Invenitur, which I'm sure I'm massacring because it's Latin, but it meant in filth it will be found. And one of the hallmarks of the clinical theories is that within the confines of everyone's experience, and you can think about this as experience out in the world or experience in the unconscious mind, there are dirty little secrets let's say and skeletons and dreadful old fears and remnants of abuse and memories of pathological behavior and failures of courage that you leave you undeveloped perhaps out of avoidance and that the psychoanalytic process is precisely the careful encounter with those forgotten and, and repressed elements of the self in the hope that a clear encounter will redeem them, unite them with the remainder of your personality and make, your, make you stronger in consequence and I would say that that's just a variant of the manner in which human beings learn and we'll talk about this more in relationship to Piaget because you always learn when you're wrong which is very annoying now what do you learn when you're correct? You, you're walking in the world, you're operating in the world you have a sense of what you want to have happen you're always looking at the world through this sense of what you want to have happen you're acting so that what you want to have happen will happen and when it happens, well, then you're happy because, well, first of all, you get what you want and that's good, maybe depending on what you want but it's also good because if you get what you want when you act then it turns out that your model of how to act is valid, right? the outcome that you get what you want indicates no error on the part of your model but it's very frequently the case that when you act to get what you want you don't get what you want and then that's unpleasant because you don't get what you want but it's even more unpleasant because it brings with it the hint of a suggestion that the manner in which you're construing the world is incorrect at some indeterminate level so for example if you tell a party, tell a joke at a party you presume that people will attend and then when they hear the joke they will laugh and then if you tell the joke and it goes flat or even worse disgusts and offends people then you're going to be taken aback and that's partly because you didn't get what you want and that's not so good but it's, but it's more because there's something wrong with the way you conceptualize the situation and then you're faced with a problem and the problem is the emergence of a domain of the unknown it's like well what kind of mistake did you make? maybe you're not as funny as you think you are that, that could be a big problem um, maybe you're not around people that, who are the way you think they are maybe they don't like you as much as you thought they liked you, I mean, the, the potential for various paranoid thoughts of increasing severity to come welling up at you in a situation where you make a 
even a trivial social mistake is quite broad and when you make an error of that sort you have to face it and sort through all the possibilities so that you can find out what it was that you did wrong and how to retool it so that in the future you don't make the same mistake and that requires well that requires in some sense what you might describe as a journey into the belly of the beast the beast being that place where things have fallen apart and where you're overwhelmed with negative emotion and chaos and confusion and that's a very old story that's the story of the journey to the underworld and the hero is the person who makes the voluntary journey to the underworld to collect what's been languishing down there and that's the basic motif of psychoanalytic theory I would say it's the basic motif in some sense of clinical practice because one of the things that you do as a clinician is find out what people are afraid of and what they're avoiding and that can be in their past or in their present or in their future break it down into smaller pieces and help them devise strategies of approach and mastery and that improves the quality of their personality and helps develop them into people who won't make the same mistakes over and over again 